This week on Cars with Big Boy Trav, we talk vehicle accessories. We review the all-new Mazda CX-30, the compact crossover that's set to take this market by storm. The crossover segment is growing at an exponential rate. Mainstream and premium manufacturers are all jostling for a piece of the crossover pie, which in five years' time will account for over 50% of vehicle sales worldwide. The premium crossover segment is dominated by the European heavyweights like the Mercedes GLA, the BMW X2, and the Jaguar E-Pace. Mazda seems to have taken the strategic shift to the premium crossover segment with the introduction of the CX-30. Unveiled at the 2019 Geneva Motor Show, it competes directly with the Jeep Compass and the Volvo XC40. To deliver even greater and more effortless driving pleasure, Mazda has introduced Skyactiv vehicle architecture to the new Mazda CX-30 to keep its drivers more engaged in the driving experience. Dripping with all sorts of technology and safety equipment, do you think it's got what it takes to dominate this very competitive segment? Let's find out. So guys, today we have a dilemma. You're looking for a crossover. You don't want something big or something small. You want something that's just right in the middle. What are your options in the Kenyan market? One, if you decide to go premium, you can decide to have the BMW X1. Or if you feel mainstream, you can have the Nissan Qashqai or even the Hyundai Creta, depends on your pocket. But today on Kazu Big Boy Trail, we have something amazing from Mazda or the Japanese call it Mazuda. This is the CX-30 and it's brand new for the first time in Africa. Nobody has ever done it before. And this is a vehicle that has won critical acclaim, accolades for safety, tech, comfort and so much more. So, before we get into the review, let's start with the walk around. How does it look? Obviously, as you can see, it has that typical brand new Mazda look. It's called the Kodo design. It's fluidity in motion, as you can see. And you can see the big grille over here with the rectangular lights and, of course, the big uh, honeycomb type of uh, grille and, of course, this big badge for Mazda. And actually here, that's where the cruise control uh, sensors and radars are placed right here in this glass badge. Chrome as well denoting style and class obviously and of course this cladding that surrounds the front air dam and goes across all the way you know that this car can do some a bit of off-road and we're going to find out later on as we go to the side you can see it's got a hatchback sort of design it's actually based on the mazda 3 or in kenyan terms axela the hatchback but over here you do have this slanting sort of coupe design which is actually something that's in vogue right now and at the back over here you can see typical Mazda design wrap around square lights obviously with the letters denoted CX-30 with this new italics with the Mazda badge and of course the Skyactiv G engine that we are going to test out later but as we said Mazda is trying to get into that premium segment is the cabin that premium let's find out as you see what the type of materials are being used in the cabin of the Mazda CX-30. Today we are reviewing something interesting from Mazda, the CX-30. We are the first African country to actually have it. And I can tell you, Mazda are going all out. They're filling in the gaps that are in the market. Remember, Mazda is trying to play the premium game. So where are the likes of the BMW X1, the Audi A2, and of course many others that are coming into play. This particular vehicle has been designed to target a very specific customer. Somebody wants a hatchback, but also wants premiumness, and also wants to go a bit of off-roading. So it's a mixture of that. And that is something that is inherent with this current generation, the young modern family. If someone is looking for such a vehicle, then in the right place, here at CBBT. So where do we start? Let's start with the dashboard design, as you can see. Mazda have gone retro. I, I love the way they've gone retro. This reminds me of the Mazda 323. If you remember the 323, the old school one in the 80s and early 90s, the design of the dashboard was quite similar. You had the vents that were right below the formation of this particular uh, dash. And of course, you do have uh, the old school uh, blower. It used to be a blower. There was an AC back then, but it was just a blower. But now, obviously, with the incorporation of new technologies, you have dual zone climate control and many other things. But to kick it off, let's start with the quality of the dashboard. Premium materials. Where have you seen a vehicle from Japan with stitched leather apart from the CX-5 and CX-9 that is available as standard? None. 
apart from the, the VX, the Toyota VX, which is very premium. So to, this guy's actually trying to bring that premium game um, into the crossover market. As you can see here, you have an 8.8 inch display, which is uh, very clear and precise, of course, um, runs the Mazda Connect system, which is uh, very intuitive and very easy to navigate. Moving over, dual zone climate control comes as standard. Right below like it, you have a CD player. In 2020, you have a CD player. That's interesting, but anyway, people do have albums and they need to listen to their music. And then you also have USB uh, functionality over here. Moving over to the Gearbox console now, you do have uh, the place where you can actually put your cell phone. Uh, in this particular model, you don't have wireless charging. But I know in the higher spec 2.5 liter version, you can actually get it as an option. Moving over, you also have uh, cup holders that are concealed with a piano black finish on top. And of course, the gated gear shift, which is standard. We don't have a traditional handbrake, creating space for numerous buttons. You have a rotary dial that controls this system. And of course, the volume knob, which also controls the radio part of this multimedia information system. Um, you do have uh, an electronic pack brake and of course, heel load assist. And of course, you can toggle through the different uh, gearbox settings for sport, eco, and of course, you can switch it off if you need to do some crazy things and that we'll discuss later. Come standard with a start stop uh, functionality as well. And of course, if you move over to the instrument binnacle, it still gives you that retro Mazda 323 feel. So you have three dials on the left hand side, you have a tachometer, right hand side, you do have the temperature and fuel gauges, and in between, now gives you the vehicle dynamic screening, gives you the speed, um, lane departure assist, which doors open, all those things are inside there. And of course, uh, this one also comes with heads-up display that comes as standard. Moving on to the steering wheel, three spoke leather feels very good, actually. And then it has satellite buttons that are not just buttons; they have been lined up with some stainless steel look to give that premium feel. Big boy is comfortable. The seats are very good. It uses a new material called Velcro that is easy to clean, but very firm as well, very supportive, and of course it. Uh, gives that feel when you're driving very fast and sporty you you feel like you're not being thrown around because of the bolsters on the side and of course the steering is adjustable to your tilt and preference tilt and telescopic and even the seats as well lumbar support comes as standard now it's time to hand over the range to mr Murigi who's going to give us fast load down on this mazda connect system what it can do for you in your life and he's going to go to the back give you the practicality 60 40 how good is the seating arrangement and of course at the boot then we're going to drive this particular car courtesy of cars with big boy trev so we cannot talk about the technology in the cx30 without starting first with the key this is the new mazda key that they have the buttons on the side it's very interesting looking and it powers this keyless entry and keyless start system that trevor talked about earlier now the piece de resistance of this system of course is this 8.8 .8 inch infotainment display it's mazda connects later system it's a beautiful system to use mazda decided not to make it a touch screen because the focus of this car is keeping your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road so you can only con control this system with this rotary wheel at the bottom over here and with some of the steering mounted controls that we have here as well of course now as voice controls in the front of our system here we actually have a beautiful driver information display so that's a second screen in the middle here and in addition to that we have of course now a heads up display very bright very vibrant and incredibly clear to use and very easy to use loads of information that's put directly in your line of sight while you're driving in this segment we actually have a radar monitor in the front in the grill that actually gives you the distance between the car in front as well as how far it's moving so what this allows this car to do is traffic and cruise control this car can actually drive itself in slow moving traffic so if you happen to be stuck in traffic which happens in big cities like nairobi this car will actually keep up with the car in front of it if it slows down it slows down if it stops it stops if it starts again this car will start again if it speeds up it will speed up to match that car now on the side here we have of course mazda start stop system this actually stops the engine when you go into traffic you stop the car it switches off the engine to save fuel this of course now is paired with that sky active g technology engine to make sure that you have the best of both worlds great performance and great fuel efficiency now moving on to the mazda connect system and you have like i mentioned 
a focus on fuel efficiency it actually has a fuel efficiency monitor that gives you a graph of how you're doing in terms of your fuel efficiency so it's not just about the engine and your driving style it's actually telling you what exactly you're doing to save fuel and it gives you tips on how you can drive better to make sure you do a better job when you're driving this car of say conserving fuel switching to the next menu you of course now have vehicle status so this will actually give you tips on when your next service is due and what exactly all of the sensors in the car are figuring out to tell you what exactly is wrong with your car in the unlikely event that there's a problem in your mazda but also for regular service it actually has your service details in the car itself in addition to this we have android auto and apple carplay as standard in this car so all you do is plug in your phone of course to the usb point here and while it charges it gives you the full capabilities of your android phone or your apple phone mirrored on the display over here and that allows you to do things like this where is the nearest petrol station showing results for where is the nearest petrol station and you can see it's actually giving me a list of all the petrol stations around me and it's actually going to navigate me to those places in addition to giving me real-time traffic information and that's really quite something so enough about the technology it's time for me to jump into the back seat and show you just how much space this has in the back seat for your staff and your people coming down to the back of the mazda cx30 and as you can see this is a beautiful place to be in premium materials all over the place these seats feel lovely soft touch plastics on the side here and where my armrest is we have this beautiful blue stitched leather where my hand is making it feel premium as you can see this seat is set to trevor's driving position trevor is six foot one he's a very big boy i am five foot nine and there's just enough space for my knees over here and quite enough space for my feet under the chair this is a four-wheel drive car so it means that there's a transmission tunnel in the middle so i think it should be enough space for two adults in the back and one child speaking of children we of course have isofix points for child seats in the both of the outboard seats here and we have cup holders in the in the hand rest over here just to make sure that we have a place to put a drink when you're on the move air conditioning vents are of course available also in the back just to keep you cool when you're on the move these are things that are usually found in very premium cars and it's interesting to see that it has come all the way down to the cx30 so this car honestly is punching above its weight but let's see how much it can carry in the boot Coming round to the boot of the Mazda CX-30 and here is where we're going to see whether this is a small compact SUV or it's a raised hatchback because over here we have 430 liters of space making this a really big place to put your stuff. This means that this is a proper compact SUV and what we decided to do is to actually show you what that means practically. Our entire crew, all of their bags are actually in the back here. As a crew of about five people, the names that you see at the end of the show, and you can see all of their stuff, plus a lot more is able to fit inside here. Under here, we have space for a spare tire, first aid kit, fire extinguisher, and triangles, all of the stuff that you need to keep it legal, and loads of space that's easily available. It's very wide, it's very low. There's a nice plastic seal here just to make sure that you can throw stuff in here without a problem, but it's time for us to take this on the road and for Trevor to let you know how this thing feels as a driving experience. So guys, today on Cars with B-Boy Trev, it's all about driving the Mazda CX-30. And I can tell you, people are actually in love with Mazda. There's that design, it's called Kodo, and people are loving it. You've seen the CX-5, the CX-9 that we've reviewed. This crossover game is becoming very competitive. People like the BMW X1, the Volkswagen t and many others are trying to cut a niche. And this is where the growth is. So all manufacturers are paying attention to this particular segment. Now, let's talk about this particular car, the CX-30. It's actually based on the Mazda uh, global architecture platform, which is also found on the Mazda 3, or it's, it's called Axela in Kenya. And even, you also find it on another brand as well, the Mazda 6 and many others. Let's talk about the power. Now, this particular car is powered by a 2-liter Sky Active G 
petrol unit. It's non-turbo. It's not diesel. It's a petrol unit that produces 114 kilowatts and 200 newton meters of torque. That on sport mode, if I decide to just floor it, ah, <laughs> yes, it's responsive. It's peppy. Um, and you do have quite a number of vehicles with this particular engine, the Skyactiv G, which basically it's a system that controls how the valves are opened and closed at certain RPMs to allow for you to have good torque and good power and good efficiency all in one package. The power is sent to the four scatters of this six speed automatic transmission that I mentioned earlier. However, it has something called the G force vectoring. Now, this one redistributes torque from different angles of the vehicle, from different sides of the axles to ensure that you have good braking stability and of course you do have maximum traction during off-road situations, which is very, very important. Safety-wise, this vehicle, of course, you know Mazda, they don't play in terms of safety. It's got tons of things from high stop, which is standard now, emergency autonomous braking, cross-traffic alert, forward traffic alert, lane departure assist, all that stuff going to keep you out of harm's way and of course you have the esp which is the father of them all which allows you to you know be safe on different circumstances but in case all hell breaks loose then you can rely on the most safest crossover in the world that's got 99 percent on the euro end cap safety rating and of course multiple airbags across the cabin to ensure that you and the family are safe so i can tell you without flinching this is the safest crossover in the market right now how about that now Yes, it can do tarmac. Yes, you can do cruising. But can it do a little bit of off-roading? Hmm. We're going to join Mr. Merigson and give us a lowdown on what this system, the G-Force Vectoring Control, is all-wheel drive. Of course, a ground clearance to ensure that you remain, uh, you know, you're able to go through the bundu bashing. Well, it's not a proper CX-9. You can do proper, but, you know, a Maram road, you can handle it very well. So join Mr. Murigi as he's going to take you through that course, our special course, only on Kazi Big Boy Travel. We've taken this CX-30 off the road. The reason we are doing this is because they call this an SUV. It has all-wheel drive and we want to see whether it's able to handle itself when the tarmac stops. Now, a lot of people who have these cars are probably not going to do proper hardcore off-roading, but we just want to see if you can turn off the tarmac and handle that last stretch on the way to Shago. And I have to say, so far, it's doing a really good job. A lot of the technology that helps this on the road, because that all-wheel drive system is for traction, is actually working very well over here. We have that increased ground clearance. The engine is giving me enough power to get into and over some of these places. This is a very sandy place, a place where you need traction and it's handling itself really, really well. One thing I have to say is that the suspension is doing a very good job. I think one of the things that's happening here is when they raise the car, you have additional suspension travel and it's actually working out over here. It's pretty comfortable, a lot more comfortable than I was thinking. All of the technology that helps you keep your eyes on the road is also working here. So the reverse camera, if you need it, the parking sensors are actually helping to know where the edges of the car are. And I have to say, the engine and the gearbox are doing a really good job of keeping this car planted on the road when we are off the road over here. And honestly, I am impressed. This is not bad at all. This is impressive. But let's see just how impressive by stacking it up against the competition. Let's go for value for money. So guys, back to my first question. Is Mazda crossing over to the premium segment, Mr. Mirigi. What are your thoughts on this Mazda 630? This car is an incredible combination of the best that you have with a crossover. Yes. Because this is bigger than a small crossover, but smaller than a medium-sized crossover. And I think that's a space that a lot of people want to play in. This is a car that is built for the urban jungle. It's built for being in town, it's built for being in traffic. So I think what people want when they want this car yes. is a car that's small enough to be parked easily, small enough to be nimble around town, but big enough to carry your people and the stuff that you need. And I think this does that really, really well. 
and of course going a bit of off road right now. Right too, kidogo kidogo too. too, but it can handle itself. How much is it? Prices for this start at 5.5 million shillings, uh -huh. and that comes with Mazda's incredible three year 100,000 km warranty. Now, who are the key rivals in this segment? Today, I've been really, really impressed by this car in terms of the fit and finish and the quality. So personally, I would put it up there with the Mercedes GLA and the BMW X1. But for this size of car, which is becoming a very popular thing for very many families and of course, young professionals, we are also looking, of course, at the Nissan Qashqai and the Hyundai Krita. Guys, do you think this Mazda 630 is better than the rivals that we've reviewed? the Mercedes GLA, and of course the BMW X1 and many others in the Krita. Send us your thoughts at the social media channels below. We'll get back to you with the results of that poll. Well, signing out, this is Big Boy Trev. This is Mirigi. Drive safe. And be safe.